All right, we are here talking with Andrew Rickauer of the United Way of Marquette County. Good morning, how are we doing? Uh, good, how are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Uh, today we're talking about some of the things that United Way of Marquette County has been doing and some opportunities coming up in the future. Uh, first thing we were talking about earlier was the Community Response Fund, this uh, three-phase project that you all have been working on and just uh, wrapped up phase two. Could you kind of walk us through what the first two looked like and what you were able to do? Yeah, so the Community Response Fund, it's a collaborative effort between United Way, Marquette County, and the Community Foundation of Marquette County. And phase one, we funded 56 agencies over $86,000 given back since March. And that was to meet the critical needs in the community uh, related to the COVID pandemic. And really survival, PPE, sanitizing, you know, just to help get the community through the pandemic. and. The great thing with that is the money was raised and distributed on a weekly basis. So it went right back into the community to really help out. There wasn't a lot of lag time. Um, so really filled a, a much needed void in the community. Um, so we were happy to be part of that. And then phase two, that application process started in early December and we just met last week to distribute the funds. It's a, to distribute these funds, it's a group of community volunteers that came together, reviewed applications, discussed and uh, voted on it. So phase two funded 23 agencies for $26,000. And again, that money was we discussed the applications and that money went right back into those agencies immediately. So it's already being put to good use. Phase two was more on the recovery side of things. Um, nationwide, we're looking at about a third of nonprofits potentially not being able to make it through the pandemic. And even with the recovery, businesses recover at a different rate than nonprofits. Nonprofits, a lot of the uh, communications coming through, at least from United Way worldwide, are saying that nonprofits are gonna be about five, six year, five to six year recovery time to get back to where they were pre-pandemic. And so with phase two, that was really to keep the money local and to help our local nonprofits recover and keep the doors open. Um, the one thing we really don't want as a community is for local needs to not be met when nonprofits aren't able to get the funding or have resources they need to keep the doors open. Um, and these are, we're looking at the critical needs, homelessness, some basic needs, food, shelter, um, PPE, still part of phase two, but just really to allow these agencies to open the doors and see the clients yeah, and that they need to be, that need to be served. So, I mean, though, I mean, you're just trying to address these needs while, I mean, these organizations, these nonprofits, they aren't usually just flowing in money anyway. So that at this time, like these donations, have a direct impact, like you're saying, keeping lights on, keeping doors open, just being able to do the basics of what they're offering uh, and things that we could lose, like these are critical things like homelessness, you were talking about uh, therapy as well, that uh, with such limited resources anyway, we can't afford to to lose these folks. Yeah, exactly. That's in, in the best of times, a lot of these services and needs the agencies are they're all operating on a shoestring budget um, and to go through this pandemic needs are up expenses stay the same but the donations coming in are dropping and so 
the gap just widens more and more every week we go through this. And with phase two, we're just hoping to kind of fill that gap a little bit. And like I said, just really keep the lights on, doors open, um, and serve as many of the needs as we can for Marquette County. And there, there is a third phase, and you're still you're just finishing uh, two, but you're starting to look at what are the needs, what is what is phase three going to look like, and how's that going to serve the community? So phase three is more long term recovery, long term planning. So it's there, it's available for COVID needs because we don't know what things are going to look like in three months or six months. So we do have some funding there to fill the needs as they rise. But phase three is also going beyond COVID. So we want to make sure that there's a, something set up in the community for when another pandemic or another crisis comes to our community and there's a need. And now we'll have money set aside in the quasi endowment at the foundation. Um, and that's part of the phase three. So we can immediately take action and we don't have to start with fundraising before we can get money into the community to fill the needs. We'll have a jump start on it. Good. Good. And hearing this, if, if people that are watching this or reading about what it is that you're doing, uh, what's the most direct way that they can because there's always a need, what's the most direct way that they can make a donation or contribute to uh, keeping these nonprofits going? The most direct way really is donations. If, if people are able to donate any amount helps. One advantage with United Way is we run workplace campaigns. So employees are able to give a dollar a paycheck or five dollars a paycheck so just a little bit at a time it doesn't hurt your pocketbook but it really makes a huge impact on the community and on the other side what unite way does with the funding is we vet all the agencies we follow up with them we know exactly where the money's going and making sure that it's staying local and meeting the needs in the community so that takes a lot off the shoulders of the community and the donors. They don't have to vet organizations. They don't have to question if the money's going to fill the needs to help our neighbors or if the money's going to a bonus for, for some CEO. Um, the needs, you know, going through United Way, the money is going to fill those critical needs in our community. It's being monitored and vetted. Um, and like I say, with the payroll deductions, small amounts throughout the year uh, make a huge impact. Um, so that, that, that's the easiest way to give. The other options are most of our agencies uh, that we work with and other ones, they're always looking for in-kind donations. And that could be a donation of paper products or PPE, um, food supplies. And so those are always something that's needed. And uh, again, United Way can definitely help guide which agencies are more critical needs and what supplies they might need. You can also reach out to the individual agencies at any time. And you act as a, a large conduit for these agencies. You're another mouthpiece to get their, what their work is doing out there. Uh, and one of the big things that you've started doing is you launched this volunteer page so that if people are thinking whether they're able to or not to donate financially, that, that gift of time is there as well. And you're helping direct people to those greatest needs and those opportunities that are available. Yeah, that, that's a great way to give back and be part of the community. Uh, our volunteer page that we created, it's called Youpers United. It's bringing all volunteers to one central portal 
and the agencies are posting their needs. Everything is current. So you don't have to question if it's still happening with COVID or not, because if it's on there, it's happening. And so people can give their own service time, um, whether it's shoveling for a senior or building senior care kits. Um, trying to think of some other things on there. Uh, office assistants. I know United Way, for one, I'm also looking for volunteers that want to come in and lend a hand with mailings or, you know, just basic office assistance. Um, I know there's some other agencies also looking for that same thing since everyone's running on a shoestring budget, uh, an extra hour or two a week from a volunteer you know, really helps agencies fill the need a little bit better. Um, so there's a lot of community needs out there and that Ubridge United is really a one-stop shopping for those. Um, Good, and we'll make sure that we have a link to uh, United Way, Market County, and Upers United uh, in this article, in this conversation. But those are just some big ways. And a lot of them sound like they're still uh, COVID safe ways. I mean, obviously following good safety protocols, all those kind of things are still important at this time. So people can still feel that they can give back to their community, but do it in a safe and responsible way. Yeah. yeah and on the Upers United page, I think most of the needs, if not all of them, they do address COVID. So you can you can kind of look through and see what level of comfort and safety you're good with. And if it's some of them might be a small group or some of them are just individual, you do, you have no contact with anybody, but there's still a volunteer need that you can take part in, give back. Is there anything we haven't uh, touched on that you want to make sure to mention in our conversation today? I don't think so. Okay. Not today. Good. Well, uh, Andrew Rickauter with uh, United Way of Marquette County, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, we're going to continue these conversations on a more regular basis. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Ben.